Hello there ladies and gentlemen, thrill seeks of all ages, my name is Coaster Chal and welcome to Coaster Chal YouTube channel. Ladies and gentlemen, thrill seeks of all ages, Coaster Chal here, Doncaster born, but built for theme parks, and welcome to another Coaster Chal chat. Today we're with Andy Hine, MBE from the Roller Coaster Club of Great Britain. Andy, thank you very, very much for coming on the show today. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Looking forward to another great season this year. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. We've got some great additions coming to the UK. We're going to sort of, you know, get your thoughts on the uh, new additions coming to the UK this year and, of course, beyond this year because we've got some very exciting projects coming up. Um, so let's start with 2022, obviously starting off with uh, Alton Towers. Uh, they've got three new additions to CBB's Land this year. Um, you've got Hey Doggies Adventure, uh, Big Adventure Badge, Adventure Big Badge. Uh, you've got Andy's Dinosaur Dig, and you've also got... Uh, the Bing Hotel Rooms, you've also got Jojo and Grand Grand at home. Uh, so three nice additions to give CBB's Land a bit of a refresh. I mean, what are you sort of thinking about 2022 at Alton Towers? Do you think these are nice new additions? Yeah, definitely. They've got to uh, invest in, in attractions for the younger members because they're the enthusiasts of the future. And if we can catch them young and get them into the rides and, and uh, all the theming and the excitement of it, then as, as they grow up, they'll be demanding bigger attractions, which, which benefits us because that means they're going to have to install more coasters as well. Yeah, absolutely. And just sticking with Alton Towers, do you think we could be seeing anything else for 2022? Do you think maybe a new version of the Retro Squad from last year? Do you think we're going to see some stuff about future projects? I mean, what are you sort of expecting about Alton Towers over the next couple of years? Um, I, can't, I, I can't divulge too much of the things that I do know. Um, <laughs> But um, that things are things are being looked at for the future. Um, obviously, they, they, they're a big investment in Wickerman. Um, they were hoping to get to get a good return on investment in the first couple of seasons, but COVID sort of mucked that up. So they're a little bit behind schedule with regards to recouping large investments um, in major rides. So um, give it an, give it another year or two, and and hopefully with some recovery as well with with um, uh, the leisure industry recovering from COVID, people coming back to parks en masse, parks make money, they need to invest, win-win for everybody. Absolutely, 100%. Um, let's head straight down then to Thought Park Resort, because 2022 may be not the focus for this park, but definitely beyond 2022 with Project Exodus, uh, this brand new UK's tallest roller coaster, beating the record set back in 1994 from the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I mean, this is... I think from some enthusiasts who've been waiting a decade for a brand new coaster at Thorpe Park, I guess it's a long time coming, really, for the industry. Yeah, they haven't had a new coaster since um, uh, Stealth, not Stealth, um, the Wing Swarm. Coaster. Swarm, that's it, yeah. Um, all their coasters begin with S. <laughs> they, haven't, they haven't had a new coaster since then, um, so the, obviously this is long overdue. Um, I know a lot of enthusiasts were hoping for some wood, uh, following on from Wicker Man, um, that isn't off the list. Um, this is more of an interim uh, filler because um, when you're trying to, to install wood for the public, a lot of the public still see that as well, rickety old rides. And of course, their comparisons would be Margate, uh, Great Yarmouth, and Blackpool Pleasure Beach which are all fantastic wooden coasters, but they're all from the 20s and 30s. So it's very hard to market that to the public as the latest thrill when you've got all these modern steel coasters that do do different things than wood. So the public needs some slight re-educating. So the idea of the, um, of the new coaster at Thorpe would, would, is more of a crowd puller. It will get people back because it's new, it's, it's going to have a record attached to it, um, the location is fantastic, and some of some of the some of the ideas that haven't been released yet are, are going to be fantastic to to, to to enthusiasts and the public. Once that's a big success, then of course they can not they don't need to put in such a big crowd puller because uh, they are, they won't be a, such a long gap as before, and they can put in something uh, more more of a, uh, to complement it, which would hopefully be some wood. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure that Project Exodus will, Exodus will be a big, you know, crowd puller for uh, when it opens, hopefully, in 2024. Uh, moving on then to Chessington World Adventures. Obviously, uh, a couple of little things going on, including a big project going on in 2023, uh, which is the big old shuttle wing coaster on that big field opposite Dragon's Fury with an inversion, the first time a Chessington coaster has got an inversion. There's a few things, really, about Chessington. You've got that coaster going on. You've got the future of Vampire being discussed at the moment. I mean, Chessington could be going through some really big changes this decade. I mean, what are your sort of thoughts about the new coaster, first of all? Yeah, I mean, the new coaster is interesting because it's a completely different um, demographic to, to the park's usual uh, audience. If you think that Legoland is, is the little, little kids, Chessington is the next one, and then Thorpe and Alton are, are the white knuckles. Um, the new coaster for Chessington is white knuckle. Um, so they are trying a, something different um, it will attract a new audience um, and it gives us something more uh, another good reason to have to go and support Chessington which, which is which is no, no, no big deal because uh, it's a lovely park and uh, it's been around for so long um, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when it was Chessington Zoo and the the most thrilling ride there was a traditional carousel and that was that was the number one ride <laughs> yeah it the classic days, you know, enthusiasts will always remember that. And, you know, speaking of classic days, a classic roller coaster is under discussion at the moment from the enthusiast community. Um, it's been discussion for a while now. Vampire, you know, it's been around for a couple of decades now, two, three decades. You know, what what do you think is long-term future? Do you think we're looking at it staying for a few more years and then removal? Or do you think we're maybe looking at a retract from someone like Vacoma? Look at the suspended thrill coaster model and how it could be a renovation of a classic. What do you think is going to happen to this classic roller coaster? It's a, it's a different one because it is still popular. Um, I'm fortunate that I, I was involved in the opening of the original with the old style cars. And then I was involved in the opening of the new version with the, with the uh, swing flawless cars um so um it still it still gets the crowds um it's a very unique space where it's seen it, it it's on the edge of the park it, it's got uh, certain restrictions because of the road next to it um and so i it's been very difficult to to physically remove the ride and put something else in um but i'm not actually sure they they would need to maybe some re-theming of it create a new area um and because because back when it first opened, it would have been scary for younger children. But now younger children are ready for anything. So um, just theme it a bit differently, make it look at, look a new style of ride and so on. As for retracking it, um, it's you know you can take bits bits of the track and replace them. It's it's old Arrow style track. The Coma and Arrow shared the same style of track many years ago. So um, uh, that would be quite an expense, and it would possibly make it a bit prohibitive in retracking the whole thing because that's basically taking the ride out and putting a new one in yeah, absolutely. And um, just finally then on Chessington, obviously we've seen over the last few years, you know, Julia Donaldson's books coming into the park, Room on um, Room on the Broom, uh, The Gruffalo. Do we think we'll expect to see any more of the Julia Donaldson books coming into Chessington to, to replace some of the rides or build new rides themed around those books? Or do you think maybe we're sort of um, ending the era of new editions based on those books and we're just waiting to see if there's going to be a re-theme in, in the next few years or so? It's a bit, I'm not because I'm not too shook up on what uh, books are are popular with young children at the moment. Obviously, parks with like Alton Towers with the David Williams books and so on, um, and on all the types of theming like that, the Thomas Land, the Peppa Pig World, the Nickelodeon. If something is popular amongst the amongst the younger men, younger groups, um, a park is going to seize on that fact and take full advantage of it. So. If those books are still popular and new books are coming out and there's an opportunity, then it would continue. Um, but there may well be other books out and about that are, are becoming more popular um, and so on. I mean, you know, it's, it's difficult. Who would have thought they'd still be building Star Wars themed rides in Disney? Um, but they're still popular and, there's, and, there's, and they've just invested billions in the latest one. So, um, yeah. I. I would have to see some more research on, on the popularity of books, which is not quite my area of expertise. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, and um, moving on then, you were speaking about Nickelodeon. Let's speak about Nickelodeon because Blackpool Pleasure Beach, a part that I will be at on the 12th of February on the opening weekend, um, Nickelodeon land was being discussed last year. There was a rumour about maybe Beaver Creek coming back. Uh, obviously, those, that rumour doesn't look like it was happening this year. Um, still a chance next year, but you never know. Um, what do you think the future is, first of all, for, for Nickelodeon land? Do you think it'll go on for the next few years, or do you think a rethink could be around the corner? Well, a lot of money was invested in that. Um, obviously, there are, there are licensing fees. Whenever a park has has a, an, a connection to a television program, book, film, whatever, there are there is lots of money involved. And it's usually the park paying the, the, the other companies the money to have their name, as opposed to the other company paying the park to be able to be, be named in that park, I think. So um, I would suspect it would all depend on, on uh, finances and how, how much it's considered a good investment uh, do people go to the Pleasure Beach because of Nickelodeon land? Does that, does that attract people? Or is that just a nice thing when you get there because it is obviously very well themed, very colourful, um, and makes it a little bit more interesting? Um, so it, it would depend on, on whether or not the Pleasure Beach are thinking they're getting good return on investment uh, or not. Um, or has Nickelodeon had its time? Yeah, absolutely, and hopefully those questions will be answered sooner rather than later. Um, speaking about the new additions then for this year, obviously Valhalla is going to be completely reimagined for this year, opening up in the summer as via the planned maintenance website at Blackpool Pleasure Beach officially. Um, we also see some track work being done to Big One, Grand Nationals down for a little while, uh, and obviously Enso, the brand new spinning seats, add to the back of their newest roller coaster icon. I mean, it seems like a really packed year for Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Yes, yeah, I mean um, certainly Amanda is is determined to, to to keep on top of everything and make it uh, still still one of the best parks in the world and one of the most famous parks in the world. Um, interesting, the spinning seats on uh, on Icon that 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 will be something to try out and see how that uh, feels because if they're free spinning, um, you could be facing in any direction in any of those elements, which will make it make it very interesting. Um, Valhalla. Um, it was always good anyway, but it was such uh, a complex ride. Um, so the improve, it'll be interesting to see what the improvements are and how it all comes together. Um, but again, another big investment there. And, and at the time of installation, it was one of the most expensive rides in the UK. Um, so um, things to look forward to, always at the Pleasure Beach. Yeah, absolutely. Moving on then to Poulton's Park, obviously an ever-developing theme park. Ever since, I would say, 2010, 2011, it's been non-stop development from there on in. Starting with Peppa Pig World and then going into things like Magma, uh, you've got Critter Creek, you've got the Lost Kingdom, and then you've got Tornado Springs. Obviously, this year they're opening their new Kids Coaster Farmyard Flyer. Um, beyond Farmyard Flyer, then, what are we expecting from Poulton's Park in the future? Because, like I say, it's an ever-developing theme park that's always got something new around the corner yeah they're they're one of the few parks that just seems to continually invest um, and a few years ago it was just a tiny little park and here it is now becoming one of the major players it wins awards as the best park in the uk um in some some categories so it's um very very good very well themed what i'm hoping for and and i'm always uh, uh, discussing with them uh, they need a junior uh, wooden coaster. They've got so many junior uh, steel coasters and slightly adult ones with the Cobra and things, but they but they need a junior one. I, and I'm thinking the likes of Rorosaurus um, over in um, in the States and um, uh, Warrior. I can't think of the first part of it, but the, but the, t the two um, uh, Gravity Group and GCI, they do junior woodies. And that's a great way of showing kids that, that, that Wood is also fun, and they don't have that um, uh, stigma of they're old and rickety because they're too young to know that. Um, and it's a great way of, of uh, introducing them to, to other types of rides as well. So hopefully um, they'll do that.
I'll have to start my real coaches and made a wood campaign again. <laughs> um, moving swiftly on to Drayton Manor, another part that seems to be over the last couple of years really stepping up their game with the brand new ownership. They're stepping it up once again. I've done multiple videos on this. Other people have done multiple videos on this. It is the brand new Viking area, which I've been told by the inside source as Viking Village. Uh, hopefully opening sometime in the spring. Um, I mean, this sounds like it could be an amazing area and another step forward for the Looping Group's ownership of Drayton Manor. I mean, what are you sort of expecting from Viking Village in terms of the level of detail they're going to go in? They're going to have to complement the level of detail that Thomas Land has already got. So they are going to have to make sure everything looks spick and span and to the same quality. So that's that's something good um, for, for my, my interest. It's, this, it's something they've not announced yet coming. Um, a quite a big investment, multi-million pound investment, that I'm sure all enthusiasts will look forward to. Yeah, it's going to be uh, a wonderful, wonderful project. And I can't wait to see if there's any more to that in future years. Uh, moving on then to our penultimate part down in North Yorkshire at Flamingoland. Um, obviously, with this has been delayed for a couple of years now, the Big Ten Looping Roller Coaster. When it eventually opens, hopefully it will eventually open this year, if, when this opens, how much of a significant investment could this be to Flamingo Land for their short-term and long-term development? I mean, obviously it was, a, it was a shame they couldn't get it open at the time they wanted to due to various various factors that have been around. Um, but great that they, they're putting in something that, that I mean, it, it's, it's very similar, obviously, to Colossus down at Thorpe Park. For a, for a small family-owned park to put in something on that scale um, is a phenomenal investment and will be absolutely perfect for that park. Um, as, as to what it does for the future, um, obviously what they have to compete with is to stop people from the south. They need to get them to come further and not stop Alton Towers. Um, so, so they've got, they've got, they've got um, uh, some, some marketing work to do to bring the crowds in. Um, the public, of course, don't they don't rush there to get the tick of the new coaster like enthusiasts do. So they've got to they've got to market it well and and and, and make it a, a destination to go to, not just because of the new ride. Um, but uh, they're a good team there. They're working hard on it, and um, and I'm sh sure from an enthusiast point of view, uh, once it does open, they're going to get some pretty good interest. And with the internet nowadays, enthusiasts no doubt will be quite quite soon after riding it, sharing their views on it. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, finally then, for the UK and the sort of 2022 season and beyond, a park that, for me, is the one park I want to see something done to, and that is, of course, Lightwater Valley Theme Park, again in North Yorkshire. Uh, recent ownership, the Ultimate Wall will not be opening for another season. How much does someone need to come in and just change like Water Valley for other? Because the land they've got to work with, there's serious untapped potential. I think every enthusiast can see that. Yeah, and certainly the, the new owners, Bright, Brighton Pier Group, um, Brighton Pier is full of uh, thrill rides. Um, so they know how they know what thrill thrill rides are. They know that people come to ride them. They have only just taken over the park though. And again, in right in the middle of a pandemic. So once they get on their feet, get some market research done, decide what audience they want to attract. Um, I know there's been lots of rumours it's going to be aimed at a uh, uh, more younger uh, market and so on. The difficulty with that um, is it's a very big park. It can appeal to young people in a younger area of it, but it can also appeal to older, the older ones with a thrill area of it and so on. So... It'll be interesting to see what 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 they come up with once they've had a chance to uh, get their feet under the table properly and and open it and have a decent season because no one's had a decent season for a couple of years. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so just to end this, then I do have one question now. I watched the Alton Towers Magic Factory documentary from '98 where you, of course, were involved. I need to know, yes or no, did you find out the identity of the Wooden Spectre? <laughs> no, I still got the letters. Um, I never found out who that was. It was, um, it was interesting getting these letters every day um, with this, with the getting more and more um, a 
abusive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, Twitter hadn't been invented then. Imagine now if it was now. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd, be getting, I'd be getting tweets every day um, and so on. But what the, what that, whoever that was, what they don't understand, I do work closely with Parks. I sign confidentiality agreements. I have to honour those because if I don't, enthusiasts as a whole will never be trusted. Mm. And so if I'm asked by a park to sign something and not say anything until I'm told I can, I will honour that. Um, and that person obviously didn't appreciate that and was keep, keep on demanding these things that I could not say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was an interesting one to watch. I mean, obviously, I wasn't born back in 1998, so in the enthusiast community nowadays compared to then, how did it feel when Oblivion was sort of being built back in 97 and, you know, it was known as just a secret weapon? We didn't know anything about it at the time. You have the, the military figures in the orange uniform standing outside saying, keep clear of the area. How did that feel as an enthusiast just watching it and then seeing that first Bologram Mabiard track on the site? I'm going to have to say it was much better than nowadays. The, the problem nowadays, social media, everybody's got an opinion. And everybody's an expert. <laughs> um, and and it's, you, you saw that when, when Thorpe Park announced their ride, the, some of the negativity that came out. Yeah. People who've who would have never ridden anything like it. We couldn't have that when Oblivion was. Nobody knew. We couldn't compare to anything. We didn't know the full, or the gen, general public didn't know the full facts about what was coming and so on. So there was a much bigger level of excitement because your speculation was just to yourself. You couldn't. You didn't have that voice to t go and type abuse on your computer that, 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 that everybody and so on. So um, things were a little bit easier back then, and it was, and the hype building w w was done in a slightly different way as, than it is nowadays. Um, because as soon as anybody picks up a snippet now, of course it it's within set. When at one of my events, when Alton Towers mentioned something about Wood long before Wickerman, before we'd even finished the discussion on the stage. It was on Twitter, and the rumours were starting, and so on. You didn't have that before, so you, it, pe people's people's expectations get too high, and then they're disappointed. If they don't have a big high expectation, they can't be disappointed. And in this country, we should be grateful for any ride we get, whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, one clear example that I had a couple of years ago was the when Alton Towers sort of put that sort of one like split second flash of different words like a christmas like spot the word thing for christmas yeah. and sw9 was one of the words and everyone every, literally in seconds went crazy like oh, secret up and nine's been teased for the first time is it gonna happen is it gonna happen it's totally different from back then um yeah. so talking about the future then talking about the the, the future from from then on in terms of the next generation of roller coasters, obviously we've got Thorpe Park coming up, we've got Chessington coming up. Which parks, in your opinion, you know, nothing to do with what you know or what you don't know, which parks, in your opinion, do you think could be in tap for brand new roller coasters, either family or thrill? Because Legoland Winds has just come out and said that a new roller coaster could be in the works after they just announced their golf course plans for 2023. I will do another video on that. Um, and obviously, Poland's Park continuing to invest. Obviously, people are always looking for SW9 around the corner. Which parts do you think could be getting it? And and Southport as well, again. Yeah. Their, um, their, or they've got they've got permission for their big one. Um, one in Ireland, um, Tato Park, that's continuing to grow big time. Um, and they they've just put in applications for three roller coasters. Um, not all major ones, but you know it's it's. These are all a start. Um, so, um, Drayton Manor, I think, is one to watch for the future. Yeah. Uh, the the Pleasure Beach uh, will always invest. One of its big problems is, la it is land. It's 42 acres. It's already packed. There are rides, over rides, going through rides, under rides, over rides, and so on. So, um, but saying that, when when um, Jeffrey Thompson uh, mentioned to me the idea of the big one. And, and explained to me how big it was going to be, the first thing I said was, well, where are you going to put it? And they got it in. Um, and you could have thought the same over um, uh, Infusion and Icon. Uh, so if there's a will, there's a way. They'll get, they'll get it in somehow. Um, but uh, 
obviously they've got so many roller coasters they don't always need to keep investing in those so much. Alton Towers, as I said earlier, um, once they recoup uh, the, the uh, cost of Wicker Man, then they may look to something new. Thought Park we already know, Chesed we already know. Le Legoland, um, they, they, the difficulty with Legoland is, is planning permission. Yeah. Um, when, when your next door neighbour is Her Majesty the Queen, it's not so easy um, to... to uh, I'll just tell you a, a, something funny. I was, at, uh, I was at Legoland once, and uh, you can see Windsor Castle from there. Yeah. And Americans say, why did they build Windsor Castle under the flight path to Heathrow? <laughs> <laughs> Only an American would say that. <laughs> <laughs> Something that's was built probably six, seven hundred years before flying was invented. <laughs> uh, it's it's, it's going to be an interesting watch. Um, Andy, thank you so much for this chat. It really does mean a lot. And um, yeah, thanks for your appearance on Coast Shout Chats today. You're welcome. And everybody watching, just go out and support your local park. The more you visit, the more money they make, the more they have to invest to keep you coming back. They win, we win. Absolutely. And thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. We're on the road to 3,000 subscribers, so make sure you do hit that as soon as possible. And for now, guys, my name is Coaster Chell. Keep living the coast life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an andy-tastic day. <laughs> Let the music play.